No way. So I'm walking to my herbicide site. You may or may not have just seen what I just saw. Oh my gosh. This is the first coral snake that I've ever actually found. And immediately I'm able to identify this snake based on its size and its color pattern, but it has mimics. And there are multiple ways to identify them. There's a misconception with um, the rhyme, I'm sure. Just saying that makes a lot of you cringe. But just in case some of you don't know, there's a very popular saying out there comparing the color pattern of the coral snake here with the scarlet king snake or the scarlet snake. But there's a lot of ways to say that saying and if you aren't in the right area or if you come across a snake that doesn't quite follow the rules because in nature, nothing ever follows the rules perfectly. Um, it can cause you to misidentify the snake, which can put you in a dangerous situation. Especially if you're trying to figure out which snake is a friendly fellow, or which snake is a friend of Jack, or which snake is Venom Lack. You know, there's three different ways to call the snake harmless, but if you say that saying wrong, you, you might not know which snake you're actually looking at. So, like, don't, don't go off the rhyme, because you might get it wrong, or you might not be in the right area, but... Like I said, that the rhyme is, it's never the goat. Don't ever rely fully on that. Instead, learning and looking for things like head shape, eye color, pattern, belly pattern even, they can give you identifying features to understand which species you're looking at. The scarlet snake here has a plain white belly, while the scarlet king snake, their bands wrap all the way around the snake just like the coral snake. When I go to a new spot, like coming from Pennsylvania, coming down to the south, I was like, I just need to know the venomous species. And luckily here in America, here in the South, it's like, there's pretty much like five or six, um, no matter where I go in the Southeast, at least, um, just like learn your, your six venomous snakes. You got the three rattlesnakes, you got the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake, the timber rattlesnake, pygmy rattlesnake, and then you got your echistrodons, you got your cottonmouth, which we might see one in a little bit. Um, and then uh, copperheads, but then you also have your coral snake. But like coming down here, I was like, I just gotta know those, and then everything else is fun. So that's kind of the general rule of thumb. If you don't know a lot of snakes, learn learn which ones to not handle, and then everything else is can be fun, kind of. There's always the risk of invasive um, or species that aren't supposed to be there. Or, you know, aberrant snakes is a thing. Aberrant, aberrant, however you wanna say it. It's just like mutations in the color pattern. So like I said, these guys can be like, they can have, they can kind of look like a ring neck. They can have like a yellow ring around their neck and be straight black. Otherwise, um, they can be a lot more brightly colored, like brightly patterned than this. So like, this is a kind of a dark coral. They get much darker than that. They can, um, but they can be much, much brighter. Another great point to make here is if you're not going after them, if you're not grabbing a hold of them if you're not trying to hurt them they're just gonna do their thing they're gonna try and get away from you they're gonna go on their way snakes especially they just they have kind of a set route they know where they're at they know where they're trying to go and so they're gonna try to get to where they know and if you are standing in between a snake and the place it wants to go um then there's a really good chance that it's gonna go straight towards you but then if you stand still gonna go past you and into the place that it knows which happens to be the perfect spot to get away so what's going on with the tail here now is actually really cool so this snake now sees me as a predator as a predator i'm coming along it knows that if it's gonna get attacked it'd rather get attacked on the back end than you know up on the face it starts coiling its tail and it's like if you bite my head i could die so it's it's it tries to entice you to go for the back end and then maybe it could actually fight back and defend itself or scare you away or you know you don't want to get bit by one see that right there if you didn't know any better looks like the front end of an eastern coral snake and the snake knows that and it knows that it this if it curls its tail and wiggles it around that it looks like a head it might just taste a little off Herpetologists are scientists that study reptiles and amphibians. Each one you ask, though, will give you a different answer for their top 10 most venomous snakes in the world. There's different things that go into that, whether it's venom yield or actual toxicity. But in general, it can be pretty agreed upon that coral snakes sit up there in at least the top 50, maybe the top 40 most venomous snakes in the world. 
And while all the other venomous snakes here in the southeast are members of the viper family, coral snakes are members of the elapic family, putting them in the same group as mambas, cobras, and sea crates. So as you can imagine, the toxicity of this snake's venom is pretty high. It actually has a LD50 value of 1.3. Essentially, if you took 100 one kilogram rats, 1.3 milligrams of this venom would be lethal to 50% of them. And these are incredibly docile animals. Um, no desire to strike, to bite, to have any interaction with me. They, it wants to go on its way. So yeah, these guys are just super chill. I wouldn't be sitting quite this close if this were a viper, but these guys bite half, maybe 40 people a year. Uh, and then in the last 60 years or so, there's only been one fatality from that. So, I mean, there's not anything to really worry about when it comes to finding these guys out in the wild. But just just understand that their bite can pack a punch if it happens to happen. But they are front fanged and would much rather just hide from you. All right, y'all. So, snake is fully under the log. And I'm going to leave it there. We've had our, had our time with it, but... I'm gonna leave it under the log. That was incredible. I'm so stoked to have come up on my first field coral snake. I've only seen um seen them in buckets. Somebody else had caught them, or um you know somebody was driving a car and I was in the back and like there's one in the road and you know you hop out and you get super excited. But that one was wired. That got off the road quick. I got a super terrible video of it like darting off the road. But now like I just I was walking. I was in the middle of work, walking up and uh was literally just crossing right here and man i just spent like too much time i should get back to work um but stoked about that that's so cool hey thanks for watching i'm always out in the field trying to take cool little wildlife videos and i get a lot of really cool stuff but putting them together into a long form educational video like this is a whole new ball game so as i look up the facts and get all the information and figure out editing um, bear with me, but if you are interested in that kind of stuff, I'm going to be posting a lot more on here. Um, I already have uh, Instagram that I post like a lot of short form stuff on, so if you're interested in just goofy little videos like that, go check that out. But I'm going to be on here. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. I'm open to like comments, criticism. What do you want to see? Um, I'm in Florida, so there's plenty of plenty of things to look at out here. Plenty of people to talk to. Plenty of cool things to see. If you want to learn about any of them, let me know.